is often said that when a civilization is stable and reaches its pinnacle, it produces art, music and literature. The people who do not have to worry about where their next meal would come from are able to engage in intellectual pursuits. But sometimes we see the exact opposite happening. Some gifted writer or artist is able to create something powerful from the pain he has endured, the difficult circumstances that he has witnessed. This is often the case with poets. Look at these lines. There was neither a home nor any kin, ground below stretched as far as feet could stride. Kiosks were my shelter, free public footpath always open. When dealing with such vagabond life offered to me, darkness visited each day, covering under its basket the world and me. These lines are from the poem My University by Narayan Survey. Today, in the 62nd episode of Grantha Yatra, we are going to discuss Survey's collection of poems called Maze Vidya Peet or My University. A warm welcome to all viewers. Narayan Survey was born in the year 1926. A mill worker named Gangaram Survey and his wife brought up this orphan who adopted the name Narayan Survey. His childhood was spent in extremely destitute circumstances. He managed to study up to the 7th grade while working at odd jobs such as a waiter in an eatery, a labourer in clothes mill and as a watchman in a school. Surve was an avid reader. An array of books and an inquisitive mind helped Narayan Surve gain vast knowledge and to get a job as a teacher in a school. Along with Marathi, he was well versed in Hindi and Urdu. Surve was a born poet. Poverty exposed him to the stark realities of life right from the childhood. His poetry is a natural expression based on these experiences. His first poetry collection, This is How I Am the Ultimate Reality, was published in 1962. This was followed by My University in 1966, Open Declaration in 1975, and the arrival of a new person in 1995. Charter published in 1982 and select works of Narayan Survey published in 1994 are curated volumes of his select works. Survey's translation of short stories by Urdu writer Krishna Chandar was published as book titled Three Thugs and Seven Stories. He also translated a novel called Children at Dadar Bridge. His select poems have been translated into English and published under the title On the Pavements of Life. Survey depicts the experiences of the labouring class living in cities in a very transparent manner through his poems. The opening lines of his poem My University are enough to make a reader gauge the style of his poetry. This is the poem of a man living a vagrant life on the pavement. He is surrounded by a depressing settlement of people yearning for a piece of bread and tired from their daily chores. The lives of those people who are engaged in hard labour to bring some food home are affected by forces beyond their control. They are frustrated by the pressure of the caste system. They have to endure riots and some lose their lives in the melee. They have come together by coincidence while engaged in activities of their livelihoods. They have no relations of blood but share a feeling of belonging. Yaqub died in riots wasn't related. Couldn't stop my tears though. Didn't hesitate to join the chorus of Milad Kalma when he was lifted. Despite such tragic experiences, Surve kept learning from life. He impressed upon his mind that there was no escape from the jolts and blows in life. His poetry uses stark imagery to depict how life is horrendous from inside though it may appear pretty from outside. Life appears pretty, healthy and plump like the cover of a book. Life appears pretty, healthy and plump like the cover of a book. Inner utterances pinned like a row of animals slaughtered by a butcher. 
The poem My University is believed to contain autobiographical elements from the poet's life because it portrays the typical life of a mill worker. He boldly narrates the pain and deprivation in this life in a realistic manner. This poem has a mention of Yakub who has died in the riots and the African uncle who was put in stock and arrested for rebelling against the arrogant British. It also mentions the only son of Chandra the prostitute who dies in a war. The poet shares an emotional bond with all these characters. He empathizes with their grief. She is dead, tears are frozen. The mind is blaze, having endured burns. I sit on their steps like sunshine, can't break the bond and leave. However, this stark reality does not make him give up. He is full of hope for man's inner strength and creativity. I do not know why I haven't met another soul as creative as human being. 37 pages of life's scriptures have turned, but I have hardly seen anything. This optimism places Narayan Surve's poetry in the lineage of Sharat Chandra Muktibodh. In the poem Such Humiliation, he says, I go about cradling a pain in my heart, hoping for a lasting cure for my wounds. In vain does the moon travel day and night. Someday it will get its own light. In a poem like Truth, Surve depicts effectively how even tender feelings of those living under difficult circumstances have to endure the scorching reality. When you touched my mouth with your burning lips, the night was again stifling. Din of the factories just beyond, beds lined up in rooms all around. Mullah's final call for Allah, hours jumping over needles. Mother moved to the corner with siblings. Father, huffing, took his bed outside. Even when leading a confined life of hardships and struggle, the poet's imagination does not allow him to be complacent. In the poem, this is how I turned out to be, he says. Every night was spent in conversation with the soul. Every night was spent in conversation with the soul. I was the only one who did not give up honesty. The imagery in Narayan Surve's poetry is very different from that of his predecessors. Emerging from his personal experiences, it testifies to the originality of his poetry. In the poem Thoughts, Survey explores the human subconscious through the imagery based on the life experiences of a mill worker. At times, thoughts emerge like workers returning home from the graveyard shift. Words digging the street with an axe get drenched and sit dripping in the shade. That's when I need your passionate hands. While depicting the laborers who lived at the crossroads of paths leading either to the factory or to the cemetery, Surve's poetry succeeds in creating an independent form of expression. The ordinary words shine with novelty in his poems. Phrases such as misery like the boiling rice, soul that resembles a log spluttering in a fire, the blue sea like spilled ink from an ink pot, a light lying plowed creates several layers of meaning in his poetry. Survey's poetry is socialist poetry. He has great faith in the common man's capacity to do work and in the unity of the exploited masses. He is convinced that the sun will shine in their life when these ordinary people will realize their power and protest against atrocities. In the poem If, he says, if you don't find me in barracks, take it for granted. The seven horses have bolted over the fence. Seven swords are missing from the armory. Take it for granted that the drums are beating. The sun, partially concealed by darkness, must be rising. I'll take it for granted, like a tsunami, our forces must be raising the dust. 
In another poem called It's Getting Difficult, he says, Must compromise, I do. It's getting difficult by the day though. To ignore my existence is getting difficult. I realize and counsel. But if I won't consent, that the spark will not fall in the magazine is difficult to pledge. It is believed that the new trend of socialist poems began with the poetry of Narayan Surve. His poetry deeply influenced the subsequent poets. We have with us today Professor Vivek Khare to speak about Surve's poetry. Narayan Surve he prakhar samajik janiwa theun kiwa samajik janiwa samajik bhan aslele mahatvachi kavi hote ani tyachich saksh tyancha ya kavita sangrahatil kavitan madun aplyala puna ekda jhalya shivay rahat nahi majhe vidyapit hi ya kavya sangrahatli pahili ani shirshak kavita ahe ya sampurna kavite madun surveni janu apla jivan patach वाचकांसमोर उभा केलेला आहे जीवन जगत असताना म्हणजे जन्माला आल्यापासून त्या अगदी वर्णाकुरवर फायनल होईपर्यंत आणि शाळेमध्ये मास्तरांची नोकरी मिळेपर्यंत या संपूर्ण आयुष्यामध्ये त्यांच्या आजूबाजूला समाजातले विविध घटक जे होते विविध जातीय धार्मिक समुदाय जे होते या समुदायामध्ये राहत राहतच सुरव्यांनी आपले कविता लेखन सुरू केलेलं आहे म्हणूनच त्यांच्या कवितेमध्ये कामगार कष्टकरी श्रमिक नाहिरे वर्गातल्या लोकांचा भरणा किंवा नाहिरे वर्गातल्या लोकांचं चित्रण आपल्याला झाल्याचं दिसतं स्त्रिया त्यांचे दुःख कामगारांचे दुःख त्यांचं दारिद्र्य त्यांना वेळोवेळी भोगावा लागणारा अवहेलना यांनी वेढलेला हा जो समाज आहे आणि त्यातील माणसं जी आहेत या साऱ्यांचंच प्रतिबिंब सुरवेंच्या कवितेमध्ये आपल्याला बघायला मिळतं सुरवे हे हार्डकोर कम्युनिस्ट होते स्वातंत्र्यपूर्व कालखंडापासूनच मुंबईमध्ये जी समाजवादी चळवळ जोर धरू लागली होती आणि स्वातंत्र्य मिळाल्यानंतर देखील या कम्युनिस्ट चळवळीने भांडवलदारांचा जो काही शोषणाचा जे शोषण भांडवलदार करत होते तर त्या शोषणाला विरोध करण्यासाठी मुंबईमध्ये ज्या समाजवादी चळवळी साम्यवादी चळवळी निर्माण झाल्या या चळवळींमध्ये सुरव्यांनी सक्रिय सहभाग नोंदवला त्यामुळे सुरवे हे हार्डकोर कम्युनिस्ट होते समाजवादी चळवळीतूनच त्यांची जीवनविषयक दृष्टी आणि त्यांची कलाविषयक दृष्टी जी आहे ती समृद्ध झाल्याचं आपल्याला लक्षात येतं आणि म्हणून कलेसाठी फक्त कला हे नासी फडक्यांनी जे विचार मांडलेले होते ते बाजूला सारून जीवनासाठी कला आणि वास्तव कला ही लोकांपर्यंत पोहोचवावी या उद्देशाने सुरव्यांनी आपल्या काव्यलेखनाला सुरुवात केलेली आहे म्हणून सुरव्यांचे सर्वच काव्यलेखन हे वास्तववादी दृष्टीने झालेलं काव्यलेखन आहे असं आपल्याला दिसतं सुरवे हे स्वतः प्रचंड हाल अपेष्टा प्रचंड दुःख दारिद्र्य सहन करत जगत असलेले आपल्याला दिसतात पण असं असलं तरी देखील आशावाद हा त्यांच्या कवितेचा स्थायी भाव असल्याचं आपल्या लक्षात येत प्रचंड दुःखभोग जरी त्यांच्या वाटेला आलेले असले तरी ते सर्व सोचूनही नारायण सुर्वे हे जीवनाकडे कमालीच्या आपुलकीने बघतात असे आपुलकीने बघत असतानाच या समाजातल्या माणसांवर त्या माणसातल्या चांगुलपणावर त्यांचा विश्वास असल्याचं आपल्याला लक्षात येत ज्या वेळेला नाशिकच्या जनस्थान पुरस्काराने सुरवेंना सन्मानित करण्यात आलं त्यावेळेला एका छोट्याखाणी कार्यक्रमामध्ये बोलताना सुरवेंनी असं सांगितलं होतं की माझे विद्यापीठ ही कविता लिहिण्यासाठी त्यांना तब्बल दोन वर्ष लागली का बरं तर त्या असं म्हटले की ही कविता जेव्हा मी लिहायला घेतली त्यावेळेला कवितेचा शेवटच मला पहिल्यांदा सुचत असे त्या कवितेची सुरुवातच मला जमत नव्हती आणि ती जमत नसल्यामुळे तब्बल दोन वर्ष ही कविता पूर्ण व्हायला मला लागली ही संपूर्ण कविता वाचत असताना अंगावर शहारे आल्याशिवाय राहत नाही 
या कवितेशिवाय इतर अनेक कविता आती मग पोस्टर नावा कविता मजे शब्द नावा कविता विस्ता विस्ता स्वतः नावा कविता कि अनेक कविता है कि ज्यादा कविता सुरवे मधी सामाजिक भाणाला अधोरेखित करना है लक्षा देते मत कि विद्यापीठ हा कविता संग्रह आ कविता संग्रह कविता हा मराठी साहित्यात महिलाचा दगड ठरणाऱ्या कविता आहेत आणि नारायण सुर्वे हे नाव मराठी साहित्यातून कधीही अदृश्य न होऊ शकणारे नाव आहे डिस्पाईट बिगिनिंग हिज लाईफ इन द मोस्ट ऍडवर्स सरकमस्टान्सेस नारायण सुर्वे केप्ट मोल्डिंग हिज लाईफ विथ द हेल्प ऑफ हिज ओन इन्स्पिरेशन He continued to inspire others through his poetry in his own words I was never dependent on the countenance of the sky never managed to salute anyone without a cause never joined a herd to move through the universe kept constructing myself never lost the habit Do read Narayan Survey's poetry that carved out its own path and brought a new energy to Marathi poetry In the next episode of Granth Yatra we shall meet to discuss an extraordinary novel until then keep reading